Welcome back to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. Thanks for all the likes and comments on the last video. And now, let's start with the first story. It's called Promised Flexibility. I was in a supervisory role as a charge nurse. I had worked in this position for about three years. I had great reviews and earned consistent raises and performance bonuses. I approached my managers and requested that they agree to a flexible schedule if I worked on my master's degree. I wasn't asking for time off. I just wanted them to adjust my schedule when it came time for my practical rotation. They agreed, as they wouldn't be losing any productivity and would be gaining a nurse practitioner for the system. About a year after I started the program, it became apparent that I was going to need to divorce my wife. We'd been married for many years. It was quite a blow. I called the employee assistance program and got some therapy that was very helpful. My managers also suggested I apply for family medical leave. Due to their concern for my mental health, I was very grateful. I had been working for the system for a number of years and had many, many hours of PTO saved up. But I figured the FMLA leave would be a smart thing to be approved for, in case court times were scheduled when I was working. I was approved for up to 40 hours per week for a year. About a year into my master's program, it became necessary for me to step down from my role as a charge and take a staff nurse position. My main manager was livid. She took it very personally and stopped talking to me and greeting me. I was very hurt initially. As my practical rotations were about to start, I reminded my managers of their promise to be flexible with my schedule. They denied my request for flexibility and began to schedule me for almost entirely for the times I would request off. At first I was frustrated and very hurt that they did this, but I remembered that I was approved for FMLA leave. FMLA is a special form of leave and cannot be denied. As my managers were not keeping their promises, it was with great satisfaction that I began to call off. Every morning I needed to for my rotations. I didn't give them any advance notice, because I was not required to. It was with even greater satisfaction I learned my managers began to have to cover my shifts themselves on occasions. As I had PTO hours saved up, I still got paid as well. I finished all of my rotations in this manner and took a job at a different system after I graduated. I worked at the new system for a few years before I was hired back at my old system as a provider. I loved seeing the look on my old manager's face when I took my first shift at her hospital as a provider and not under her chain of command. The next story is called Changing Prices. This is from over a decade ago when I was a student. The curriculum I was in is very particular to my country. It's a two year intensive program that usually ends in admission to the best schools in the country. This curriculum, like most of its kind, was hosted by a public high school with a much larger population of high school students and it was heavily STEM oriented. This high school, being downtown in a big city in a large area of nothing, had, in addition to the usual lunchroom, boarding facilities that were mostly used by students in this curriculum. As the high school population usually lived in town, boarding students paid a fixed price of about $62 a week for the room and all meals Monday morning through Saturday morning. Other students could eat lunch for about 4.30 a lunch with a prepaid card. In January of my second year, all boarding students were made to attend a meeting about a new price structure that would count everything separately. The room would be 29 euros a week, lunch and dinners would be 4.20 a pop and breakfast would be 2 a pop. The resulting price would be an across the board 2% increase which is negligible. Keyword being across the board here. I still don't know who they expected to fool. Obviously, good STEM students would figure out instantly that for them, the week would now be 82 euros. So a 33% increase. There was an uproar. 
the rest of the meeting was hearing over and over. It was validated by the school board, as if boarding students had any representation there. The parents were too far, and the students too busy. And of course, other parents and students would have proof of what was essentially a discount for them. So we were stuck with the new pricing. But we don't pay for the meals if we don't go, huh? Remember, the school was downtown, and it appears the students needed much less of the breakfast, lunch and dinner on site where there are tons of options in walking distance at a lesser price. Up to and including stocking up things in the rooms for breakfast. The kitchen was drowning in stock and bleeding money through the nose. The school being public, buying the food was not a very flexible process they could change week after week. It only lasted a few weeks. And they came back to the old pricing structure, albeit a little higher. 65 euros per week I believe. I still call it a win. The last story is called Track FMLA. Wife has some health problems. She has fully certified and signed off on FMLA. Her job knew this when she was hired and they had flexible schedules. So whenever she would have a flare up, she'd just flex it. Couple hours off now and she'd make the time back up later in the week. A boss knew this, was cool with this, everything was great. Cue a new boss coming in. A couple months go by and the new boss tells my wife repeatedly, you are doing great, no notes, keep doing what you are doing. Now the new boss is an old school boomer Karen and wife isn't afraid to tell her Karen to sit down and be quiet and refuses to take her crap. So in a total shock to everyone, a few months later, without notice or warning, Wife was called into HR. HR tries to go on about the FMLA stuff, saying she hasn't been filing her FMLA claims and that she's scamming the company and blah blah blah. So she tells them, one moment, I know an FMLA expert with 15 years of experience. Let me call him. Hey honey, you got a minute? I've worked with FMLA at a national corporate level for years and years. Finally came in handy. No dear. FMLA counts as time worked. You've been flexing to make up your time, so it cannot be counted against your FMLA limit. If you need to take FMLA, it's hours worked and does not need to be made up under federal law. They can insist you use PTO alongside it, but they cannot tell you to make it up or they are committing a felony. I could hear the dead silence on the phone. Wife finally speaks up. So, if the problem is that I haven't been properly applying for FMLA, I'll be happy to do so and stop making my time up. Karen boss, I'm gonna have to push these projects back, since I won't have as much time to work on them as I thought, since I won't be allowed to make up my time anymore. If you want to authorize some overtime, we can work that out. Turns out Karen boss just didn't like the fact that my wife is work from home and she couldn't micromanage her thought she'd get HR to help scare her straight. They were absolutely not prepared for someone to know more about their claims than they did. Karen boss tried a few more times to throw her raid around. Each time, wife responded with some variation of, I'm not legally allowed to do that. And I have been instructed by corporate to file all time as protected FMLA. Threats of discipline were met with, go ahead. I'm the only one you've got who can do X job. I work here because I enjoy it, or at least I used to. Write me up if you feel the need, but please know when you do that will be the start of my two week notice. And she's stuck to it. Anytime she needs to take FMLA time off, she does so, writes everything properly. And Karen boss can just sit and sue, because there's not a thing she can do about it. It's been about a month now, boss Karen has finally realized that she's got about as much weight as a feather. HR has gone completely silent and things have overall gotten much better for the wife since she's got much less stress now. Karen boss keeps communications short, direct and to the point. Just how my wife likes it. Know your rights people and do not be afraid to stand up for yourself. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos.
And now, I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye-bye.